Dyson fans are really quite interesting devices. They don't have blades and yet they're able to move quite large amounts of air. And the reason they're able to do this is from a number of really interesting engineering solutions that they've created. The first of which that they use is that the Dyson bladeless fans aren't really bladeless. There is a motor down in the base of these fans that is a centrifugal motor. It spins very quickly and forces air up through it. That air is then passed through a series of tubes up into the veins of the fan. And when you look at one of those oval shapes, you'll see it actually has a small slit in the back of it. The way the slit works is that air is forced out through this small slit over basically an airfoil. And using aerodynamics, you're able to have that air follow that airfoil. It basically kind of sticks to it. And that is fine, but it doesn't really increase airflow. The reason Dyson fans are able to blow more air than what their fan might actually be able to produce by itself is that as that air is moving over that airfoil, it interacts with the air inside of the circle, inside of that oval. This is called entrainment, where basically air drags other air along with it. Since the Dyson fan is designed so well so that the airflow sticks to the airfoil inside of that ring and then also brings other air with it, it's able to force air through the ring that is pushed along with the air that is actually pushed by the motor. And this is actually a really good system because number one, it looks amazing. And the number two, it actually does create a more efficient system. Whereas traditional rotary fans have only the action of the rotor itself, the propeller inside of there, which is less safe because a kid could put their fingers into the fan if you have an open fan that's spinning super fast and has old metal veins from 1950, but it also just looks really good. And this is a very Dyson-esque solution because it's elegant, it works better than what is currently out there, and it's a nifty engineering solution. But this system has some trade-offs. It is much more expensive to manufacture than just a standard propeller. With a standard propeller, you have a mold for the propeller and then you shove it on the front of a motor and then you're done. With the Dyson fan, what they actually have to do is stamp an inner ring that is the airfoil and then stamp or mold the outer ring that contains it all and lets the airflow through it. And then they have all these other components inside that are controlling airflow and that kind of thing. So it's a very complex mechanism. But this is also why a Dyson fan would be ideally produced with 3D printing. 3D printing has a number of key advantages. First of all, if you have multiple components, you're able to design them so that they're able to be printed all at once. Rather than having an inner ring that is cast or stamped and then an outer ring that is molded, you can instead just have the single vein with holes and internal channels printed, which is great because you've just eliminated all that assembly, all that extra processing and all that extra design to design for each one of those individual processes. Now, here's the other thing that's interesting. When we designed our Dyson fan, we made it a little bit simpler. We're not going for a $500 or $700 fan. We needed something that we could make in a day to prove out the concept. So what we did is we got a basic centrifugal motor that is actually used for inflating an airbed, and we designed an internal cavity around that so that it can be shoved up into the bottom of this. The outer side is a basic cylinder so that it looks nice and we proportioned it with respect to the veins so that it looks decent. This is a decent enough fan to where you could have it inside the house. And it looks interesting. It doesn't look like a fan. The veins themselves, we have some channeling inside of here that splits the air from that motor into these two veins. It then comes up into two slots inside of here to where it can blow out. And then on top, we designed airfoils. Airfoils that allow the air to follow along that and ideally entrain drag along air through here so that as that the air is flying quickly over this airfoil right here, it's able to drag more along with it. And you know, for a first shot that was built in 24 hours, it works pretty darn well. And it demonstrates all kinds of nifty capabilities with 3D printing. Not only were we able to kind of start reproducing a system that Dyson has to put probably several hundred pieces into and get it down to one piece plus a motor module, we were able to get some interesting capabilities out of it. So like this bottom texture right here, you will notice that the top are smooth, but the bottom here is textured, even though it's the same part. This is possible because we were able to digitally apply a texture down here that almost looks like pinning, as if we had sandblasted it, which creates a really nice surface finish that doesn't look like it was 3D printed and is really robust in mass production. If we wanted to make a thousand or a million of these, we totally could because it's simple enough to be designed. There's no weird overhangs. And then the upper veins, again, have all that complex internal channeling, which would generally need to be created from a really complex putting pipes and tubes together, whereas right now we just have it embedded in a monolithic block. So this is a great demonstration of all the advantages of 3D printing. The other thing that we're able to do is actually vary density of this part. If we were printing this in real life, we would probably make it denser down here so that the bottom of it is weighted down in addition to just what the motor module is so that this thing always balances and these can be much lighter. Also, if we were going through and doing an industrial design pass of this thing, we would probably embellish and bevel and change this upper surface a little bit. We would actually probably also 
add a dome over the top, an arch right here, because it wouldn't really be functionally useful for anything because we don't want to control the air that direction, but it would modify the design and make it look nicer and make it look more like the Dyson fans. The other thing that we would do is when we were designing the interior channels, we did not compensate for the airflow changes over time. So the airflow distribution along this line is really uneven. It really shoots up towards the end and then it's forced out right there. We should have rocket nozzled it a little bit more so that it compresses so that there's constant pressure all the way up so that air is going out through the whole thing. But again, this is a part that was designed in 24 hours in order to demonstrate how you can combine really complex mechanisms to create really complex products that had never really been possible before. Dyson is able to manufacture their fans, but they're not really able to do it super affordably, which is fine for their brand because they're a premium brand, but they aren't able to really create something that's really mass market. This fan could be modified and have the extra bit of engineering done to it to make it really effective and useful. And this would be a really cool piece that could be mass produced. You could plug into a print farm like ours here at Slant 3D to produce thousands and even up to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of these without having the upfront cost of molds or all the tooling or having to do all the engineering of a hundred different parts that Dyson had to spend millions of dollars to do to get their bladeless fan. But it's also just a really cool concept because the airflow dynamics of bladeless fans is just interesting in general, even if you're not interested in manufacturing itself. The way these things work is great and they create all kinds of new advantages because there is no danger of somebody's fingers getting whacked. There is no spinning fan blade that looks kind of gross. It does not take up much room because you're able to use a very condensed motor package and you're able to create really unique aesthetics and geometries that are really complex but very easy to manufacture because you can use mass production 3D printing. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. This was a really fun project. We had to do it really fast. We had to turn it around in just a day to get this video out in time, but we had a wig, we had the idea, we went ahead and did it. Comment down below what other hairstyles you think I should try out in the future, and let us know if we should develop this. We were messing around with it, and it's actually pretty darn nifty, so we'd like to maybe pursue this a little bit. So if you'd like to have us do a part two where we actually go deep into the engineering of creating a final product from this, uh, let us know. Have a great day, everybody.